Hey y'all and welcome to the fifth video of the Video World series in which we build our Jitter tool in Max using JavaScript. So I hope you're ready for some programming and uh, let's get straight into it. First a little forward which is I've added this message to receive the path of the Max application in the computer because some of us are Windows, some of us are Mac. So uh, in this way we can get the path where the Max application is inside our computer, which in Windows is in like program files cycling 74 Max 8 and in Mac it's going to be somewhere else. So if we create a receiver and we send the, the um, app path to this receiver, then we can get the, the path to the application, which we then uh, we can uh, simply sprint to get the folder where the videos are. So this is kind of an inter-platform way to get the path of the video folders uh, of the built-in videos in Max. Great. So when we click on this bang, it's going to basically to load the movies inside our JavaScript. Great. So what we're going to do in this video is to place those movies in a grid so that this will look uh, very neat and nice. So let's do that. Let me get my code. So before we do that, there is something pretty important that we have to do which is, uh, in JavaScript, in Max, when we instantiate objects in JavaScript, these objects are actually um, kind of pointers to C objects that are created by Max. So when we delete the JavaScript object in the patch, it's actually not going to delete from the memory of the computer those objects. They're going to still be there and are going to occupy our RAM. So in order to fix that, we have to delete those objects manually every time we delete a JavaScript object. So there is a function for that in uh, JavaScript, which is function notify deleted, which is called automatically by Max every time the JavaScript object is deleted. So that's pretty handy. And what we want to do here is uh, to get a for loop for var player in G video players, which is the array containing the video players, so which contains a video plane, a JIT movie object, uh, highlight quad, and so on. So we have to basically say that this G video players player, it's going to um, must free its content. Now we have to create this function uh, called the free, so that we can call it uh, from our main code. So we go inside our JIT, uh, our video player class, we create a new function. So this dot free equal function doesn't take any argument. And what we want to do is to say, we have to free the memory of all these objects. So we have to say this movie player dot free peer. That's the max function that, uh, that deletes the C object itself. Great, then we want to delete also the video plane. So this dot video plane dot free peer. And then we got to delete also the, the quad. So this highlight quad dot free peer. Okay, great. So now this function gets called every time the JavaScript object is deleted, so we can free the memory. Great. So actually we should free those objects also every time we provide a new folder for the um, for the object because it could be that there are less videos in the new folder so this will the result in the memory still being occupied by the older videos so let's create another function and call it function free video players and that's basically uh, that's basically what we already wrote so we create another function that we can call by itself here and we have to do it also here in the load folder function before we actually set the array to an empty array so in this way it's going to be um, first freed and then empty so free video players great and then we can empty the array good and we need also to free all the jitter objects up here so we got a node we got the camera node master plane dummy node and dummy camera so let's create another function and call it uh, free jitter objects basically and we have to basically get all their names and for example 
we have a node object and then we have to call the free peer function on all of those so we got the node we got the camera node dot free peer then we got uh, master plane this is our video plane dot free peer and then we got also we could actually do um, this so we have it on two different sides it's pretty handy so we got node camera node master plane dummy node dummy node dot free peer and then we got dummy camera dummy camera dot free peer and we got also the sketch so sketch dot free peer okay i think this is it so when the object is deleted then we have to also free jitter objects great so this was it a bit of housekeeping uh, that was necessary and now we can proceed with our algorithm oh um one thing first if you are on gl3 the screen to world function is not yet working on the gl3 version in javascript so you have to switch to gl2 all right this is going to be fixed in the future but for the moment it's not working so you have to be on gl2 if you want the code to be working all right so let's now go on so we need to set a position for our movie uh for our movie video planes so we can pass uh, the the, um, the position is going to be linked with the index of the video plane uh, in this uh, in this loop so we need this index that is going to be used by the video plane uh, by our video player class to set a position uh, in the master video plane for our little video planes so let's create here a variable index let's set it to zero and every time we find a new file in the folder then we have to increase the value of the index by one great then we can pass it as an argument to the to the constructor of our video player class so we set it also here as an argument great and the position now instead of being a random array we have to base it on this index so we know that the transform reset attribute of this master plane is set to one which means um, uh, the texture that is output from our node and is rendered on the video master video plane then the whole world is contained inside this um, the video plane so we know that the x-axis goes between minus one to one the y-axis goes to one to minus one so about starting from that we have to base um, the position of the video plane so for example we say that we want to have the first video on the left corner so we want to take the modulo of the index between one and uh, how many video planes we can place on our um, master plane and uh, and then scale it between minus one and one so to know how many video planes we can place in the master plane we have to see uh, how big are those mini planes so which are 0.2 the scale of them so basically if we divide one by 0.2 we know how many video planes we can get in the master plane which is basically five so we can do like this we can take the index uh, modulo of one divided by this scale right so this is going to be the modulo so in this way we have numbers that go between zero and four now we, ne we need to scale that between minus one and one so first i will probably um, let's actually create a new variable and call it like how many video planes which means basically how many video planes we can place uh, uh, on the x axis of our master plane and this is going to be e one divided by this dot scale uh, maybe let's call it like number of video planes right so basically we have to take the modulo of that um so index modulo of how many video planes we can have and these all must be divided by number of video planes 
uh, minus one though because we want that this number goes between zero and one so if we divide it simply by number of video planes which is five this will never arrive to one because the modulo goes between zero and four so we need to divide it between the number of video planes minus one which is four so we divide it by the maximum amount that this number can reach good and then we basically this goes between minus one and one we have to uh, multiply it by two and then subtract one to this whole thing so now it should go between minus one and one so let's try to actually set this as the new position uh, for the x and the z we just leave at zero let's save here let's go on uh, our patch let's load the videos and see what we get so we can see that they are distantiated, which is not what we want. We don't want that they are distantiated. They must be connected to each other. So they must be completely attached one to the others. So there is something wrong here, uh, which is, I think, that we don't want to multiply it by two because um, we don't want to go between minus one and one. Actually, we want to go between minus one plus the scale, so half of the size of the mini video plane, um, to one minus half of the size of the mini video plane. So let's do like this. Instead of doing multiplied by two minus one, we have to say multiplied by two minus this scale. Uh, minus uh, one plus uh, this scale. I guess this should be it. Let's try. Let me save. Let's try again. Uh, no, <laughs> wrong. Incorrect. What we want to do actually, all right, we need to subtract. Uh, 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 double the scale because this is uh, for the left side and the right side. So double the scale. And then actually plus uh, minus one plus the scale. Because, um, right, we want to subtract one to that and then sum back half of the size of the um, video plane, which is the, the scale value. So let's see if this works. Uh, let's load. Right. Okay, so this works. Cool, uh, let's now proceed to set the Y position, because now they are just overlapping on each other. So the Y position, let's go on a new line. Uh, for the Y position, we can just divide the index by a number of video planes. So, and we actually need to take the floor of that, because we just want to get the index number. So when this goes above uh, uh, five video planes, then it's going to be one. And we don't want to have the fractional numbers, we just want to have the integer numbers. So we have to say math floor. Good, but then this will be like just 0, 1, 2, and so on, which is not what we want. We want to have that uh, this starts, uh, this moves of uh, an amount that is uh, this scale multiplied by 2, because that's the size of the mini video planes. So we got to multiply this by this scale multiplied by 2. And then we want that it starts from the top. So we actually have to sum uh, 1, uh, but not completely 1. 1 minus this dot scale, I think. Let's give it a try. I'm saving the main file. Let's go here. And uh, let's check. No. Maybe we need to actually subtract 1. Maybe we need to subtract one. Uh, let's try. I'm, I'm going really just uh, uh, just trying uh, and errors here, guys. So sorry, bear with me. Um, good. It's it's kind of okay. It's just reversed, so we can just uh, multiply that by minus one and reverse this wall thing. So I just put everything in in parentheses and just multiply this by minus one which is, should do the trick i guess yeah okay <laughs> it's not the probably it's not the smartest way to do that but uh, it works so cheers so it's great it's good uh, we just need to now to output the name of the movie once the mouse is on top of it once we click so for the mouse click, we actually need to get the the mouse from the the JIT world. So actually the mouse variable, 
because once we click uh, uh, it's going to give us a one here as the third uh, variable the third number so we can just uh, create a message say dollar three and we can attach it to the um, prepend mouse screen cards function actually so we can do like this we can make uh, make a pack object i suppose and we can just do like this and like that good so every time we click it's going to give us a one and when the mouse goes up it's going to give us a zero on the third variable so we go inside javascript it goes in our main file mouse screen chords here there is a third variable which is mouse clicked so check if his mouse is inside and we should pass also the mouse clicked variable here to this function so let's go now in the video player class and here we get also mouse clicked this was an array right uh, exactly okay so if the mouse is inside we have the light quote enable and now we have to say if uh, when the mouse is inside and we also have the mouse clicked so if I just cl uh, put mouse click without saying uh, equal equal to one, this just means uh, if this is equal to one by default. So if this is true, we have to say uh, outlet zero, and then we want to output the name of the file, which is uh, this movie player movie file. Right. So I'm going to save here. I'm going to save here. I'm going to go into the patch going to load the videos and I'm going to attach a message here and check what's if it's working yeah it's it's working cool uh, we could output the whole movie path but maybe we are going to do it next time I think uh, you should be able to do it uh, this yourself but uh, I think we're going to do it next time because this video is getting very long and next time we're going to add a little more refinement and, uh, and, and make this thing nice but uh, for the moment it's uh, working pretty well right we click on the video with our mouse we get the name of the video out of here which then we can use to do whatever we want so mission accomplished for the moment uh, fellas um, very proud of you that you followed until here uh, if you have questions or stuff that was not clear, please uh, let me know. And the feedback, whatever, is always welcomed. Check the pattern for the patch to download it. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.